Well, greetings, my scattered brothers and sisters in the Lord. Trust you know that the grace of God is with you and that the Lord is watching over you this day. John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only from the Father, full of grace and truth. John goes on to say that from his fullness, from Jesus' fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. And that while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So here's what I've been thinking about. Melissa, when you give birth, to Grace's baby sister. You and Jose need to name her Truth. And that way we'll be able to say, not only did grace and truth come through Jesus Christ, but grace and truth came through you, Melissa, and Jose, as we celebrate the birth of baby Truth. Anyways, I know you're trying to figure out a name. You might think about Truth. Grace and Truth came through Melissa and Jose. I don't like it. Well, got a little bit more than that today. Um, grace and truth. We tend to think about those as polar opposites. That on the one hand, we have grace, and we think about grace as almost as if it ignores truth. That um, God's, in God's grace, God doesn't look at our sin. Uh, God doesn't look at our rebellion. God's going to just ignore that and treat us good anyways. And then on the other side of it, we think about truth and we think that truth is kind of void of grace. That if somebody confronts me with the truth about my life, the truth about what I've done wrong, uh, they're not actually being very gracious to me. They're actually being judgmental towards me. And we tend to think about God that way sometimes. If, that if God's confronting with me, confronting me with the truth about my life or confronting me with something that needs to change about my life, then that's not a very gracious God. That's a judgmental God. And who wants a God like that? And so we end up taking these concepts of grace and truth and making them mutually exclusive. And we want the grace, but we don't want the truth. Or sometimes we want to give somebody the truth and not show them any grace. And yet here's John saying that in Jesus, grace and truth are held together. And that when we behold the glory of Jesus, what we're beholding is the grace and truth of God. Important for us to catch that. That Jesus isn't really being gracious to us unless he confronts us with our misconceptions about God unless he confronts us with what's wrong with our own lives. But he doesn't confront us with our misconceptions. He doesn't confront us with our misliving, our sinful living, just to kind of put us in our place. He confronts us with grace because he offers us power to change. And so it's not simply confronting us with the truth of who we are, sinners, but confronting confronting us with the truth of who we can become by the grace of God, children of God. Grace and truth go together. If Jesus did not confront us, then he wouldn't really be all that gracious because sin is damaging and misconceptions of God are damaging. If we have a wrong understanding of God, if we're living sinful lives, then those are paths of self-destruction. And if Jesus is going to be truly gracious, which he is, then he confronts us and calls us to repent from those things and to change and to receive the truth about our lives, and the truth about God. But the good news is that at the heart of that truth is this gracious offer of becoming children of God by receiving him, by believing in him, by accepting his invitation to change and his power to change. We become children of God. So there's more to talk about with grace and truth. We're going to save that for the next one. There's kind of a different angle to look at it. But for now, 
go forth this day walking in the grace and the truth that comes to us in Jesus Christ. Have a great day. God bless.